All right, everybody, and it looks like we are live here today. Welcome back to the Daily Digital Show. Uh, today is Friday, August the 12th, and my name is Junior. And today we have a good few couple articles to talk about here today. And also, since it is Friday, we have our flashback Friday into uh, what the tech world has been up to the past hundreds of years. So today we're going to talk about uh, Mood Rings. Mood Rings looks like they are making a comeback. Uh, for those who remember Mood wing, Mood Rings, we have a couple of ways that you can start making money, um, especially one way that if you do literally one thing, you can get like a million dollars for just doing that. And then also we have what we call now here Internet Time. Um, so yeah, so definitely stay tuned for those items there. I will be taking a quick brief break and then we will jump right back into it. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, so the first thing that I have off the block here is a way to make $1 million. Yes, you heard that correctly, uh, but <laughs> this is going to be the kicker. You have to do a math problem. Like I said, it is one thing, but it is a very hard one thing. It's a math problem in which even the smartest of smart math people have not even ever been able to do, uh, except for one of them. So there's a total of seven, what they call millennium prize problems. And these are well-known complex mathematical problems that have been selected by the Clay Mathematics Institute way back in the year 2000. The Clay Institute has pledged a $1 million prize for the first correct solution to each one of those problems. Uh, to date, only one Millennium Prize problem two have been solved, which is the Poincare Conjecture. The Clay Institute awarded the monetary prize to Russian mathematician Grigory Perelman back in 2010. However, he declined the award as it was not also offered to Richard S. Hamilton upon whose work Perelman built. Um, so, you know, if someone else has been started working on a problem and you want to basically piggyback off their work because, you know, they gave up, they couldn't figure it out, yada, 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 um, you are more than welcome to go ahead and complete it. Um, this is a, a, this is a, you know, a, a manly move here though. He said, no, I don't want the money because I, it's not all my work. You know, um, I myself probably would have taken the money and just said, Hey, you get 500,000. I get 500,000. We both did it. We both completed it. Um, but you never know, Mr. Richard S. Hamilton, he may have passed on or something like that. Um, but then you can also give it to his family, give it to the estate or whatever, but to each his own. Uh, but yeah, so the remaining six problems that you can solve is the Birch and Swinnerton Dyer conjecture, uh, Hodge conjecture, Navier Stokes existence and smoothness, P versus NP, Ryman hypothesis and the Yang Mills existence and mass gap. Um, the Yang Mills existence and mass gap is actually how I learned about these seven uh, or now six millennium prize problems because I actually tried to solve it. Um, please don't ask me how far I got on that. Uh, just know that you know it's these are hard problems for a reason. They they they're given a million dollars for a reason. Uh, so you can just kind of take a quick look here. The unsolved problems again. Um, I'm I'm not sure exactly what they are per se. Um, I'm just gonna kind of scroll through slowly so that you guys can kind of read it. Pause the video if you'd like. Learn more about them. Uh, and of course, the links to uh, this article here. This is just Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia article will be on the description for this video. Uh, so you guys can also go to it, check it out, or just Google uh, the Millennium Prize problems and then, you know, a bunch of information on those will actually come up and you can kind of start working on it. And hey, you never know, make a million bucks. Um, definitely give something out to the messenger. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, so the next thing is going to be mood rings. So if there's a lot of people out here who may remember mood rings. Uh, I don't see them too, too much. Now, recently, I, I know they still sell them. I've been to a store recently that actually does have them, uh, but not a lot of people actually wearing them or anything like that. Um, but it looks like they're making a comeback because they are now becoming smart rings. Um, chick, chicky, 
cheeky. I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying that correctly, but your emotions, your life, your terms. Introducing the Chicky Smart Mood Ring. Uh, this is not your original mother's mood ring. This is the mood ring in which it can get accurate emotional data anytime and anywhere. Uh, it's the first wearable mood ring uh, that accurately determines your emotional state in context and in real time, empowering you to take control of your emotional well being. Uh, so the way the mood ring used to work, I think it worked off of like body heat, body something, something when you had it on, uh, what it would do would change color. So if it was blue, it would mean you're happy. If it was red, it would mean you're mad. If it was yellow, it would be you're sad. Green would mean you're like excited. I'm not exactly sure the exact breakdown of what the colors meant, but each and every single color meant a different mood for you. So it looks like the way that this is working is that it's doing the same thing, but it's using technology in order to actually do it. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole science of it here. There's a button here called the science. There's a link up here in the menu called the science. Um, so you guys can feel free to check that out as well. But what it sounds like is that just like all of these uh, Fitbits, Apple watches, stuff like that, they have uh, a sensor in it that kind of gauges all of the... Um, uh, stuff that your body does over time and then as it's working it'll actually determine okay hey this person's you know body elevated temperature dollar you know there's a lot of science that goes on behind it um, that'll actually determine your specific mood at that moment um, so yes raising awareness to of your current emotional state while giving you choice to select alternative emotional experiences simply put the cheeky smooth smart mood ring gives you the tools to become the master of your emotions um they are currently running at 200 dollars, which is quite a bit of money for uh just knowing my mood i feel like if i'm mad i i kind of know that i'm mad but um hey you never know this might be one of those things that uh, the world actually does need to track their emotional states uh with over 90 percent accuracy um the design is nice though. I, I like the design. I really like the design. Let's just I'll just click on it. All right. And that's how it looks like. That's how it comes to you there. Uh three day battery life with a portable charger. It's lightweight, durable, waterproof, up to five meters. Um So yeah, so that is the smart mood ring. Um, what's so funny about this is that, well, not this per se, but actually when I was researching this, uh, I actually Googled smart mood ring and a bunch of other stuff came up and I don't know why, but I actually ran into this article. Uh, this is the mood ring. A cultural icon re-emerges as a smart wearable NFT. Uh, so apparently they do a quick, like brief background of the mood ring here. It started back in the summer of 1975 who, and it was invented by Josh Reynolds, um, and U S congressman or whatever. Uh, now it's been trying to emerge it as a physical NFT. The asset is the property of NFT creative enterprises. Um, yeah, it talks a little about who Reynolds was. Talks a little bit how it came out back in August 1975, and there were a bunch of knockoff copycats that came out as well. Uh, now, nearly half a century later, a rare original solid gold mood stone ring is about to be auctioned off as a physical NFT, allowing the winning bidder to physically own a piece of history and iconic his household name and pop culture artifact. Reynolds, the mood ring creator, would go on to develop uh, several other household name products, including the thigh master. Also, this is back in November of 2021. Uh, so this is, this is an old article just to let you guys know. Um, so the NFT is scheduled to go up for auction back in, or yeah, back in two, November 6, 2021 on the Venly.io platform. I've actually never heard of Venly.io, so proceed with caution. Again, just do your research. They're probably perfectly fine, but I don't have anything to say about them. Uh, upon completion of the sale, a limited edition of 999 Ethereal 
mood rings will also go on sale at a fixed price. Details of all of the offers and a link to the Venly marketplace will be on the original landing page for the mood ring. Uh, FYI, this landing page no longer works. And also this related links, the original moodring.io, that no longer works also. So it looks like after the mood ring sold out or sold or whatever, they just went ahead and took it down. Because, I mean, this, there's no real reason to have it up anymore at that point. Um, so, yeah. So that is the wearable mood ring there. Uh, you guys can definitely check those out. Um, well, I say wearable. Smart wearable mood ring. I guess they're all wearable technically. Uh, and then so today, as I mentioned, is Flashback Friday. So Flashback Friday um, is going to be a little bit different than last week's Flashback Friday because we are currently in what they call Black Business Month. So August is Black Business Month. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who did not know that. Um, this is only something that I've recently learned, like in the past couple of years. Black Business Month that is celebrated in August. Uh, so it is now time to acknowledge and appreciate black owned businesses across the nation and all they represent in the count country's continual striving uh, for diversity and equality. Uh, black Business Month is exciting because it gives us an opportunity to focus on a community that is far too often underrepresented when it comes to access to capital and opportunities to build wealth. Um, so it just gives a quick brief history of Black Business Month. Um, you guys can go ahead and read through all of this here, but I just want to scroll down and go to the timeline because the timeline is what I actually find very, very interesting. I mean, the, the history of it as well is pretty interesting. I had no clue. I mean, this has been going on for like years. So yeah, so in 1898, Black people begin to own insurance companies. Yeah, <laughs> that's completely new to me. Uh, the North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company is established and quickly becomes one of the oldest and most prominent black owned insurance companies in the U.S. Uh, I have to actually look into that because I had no clue North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company. I mean, I don't live in North Carolina, so I never even knew it existed, but I had no clue that, I mean, it's been out since 1898. Um, and that's like life insurance is one of those things that, you know, majority of black people that I know have no clue what it is, let alone whether why they should have it or need it or whatever. Um, and, you know, a lot of people that do have, know about it, they don't plan on using it or getting it. Um, but even with life insurance, you can make money in business with life insurance. But that's another topic. In 1915, First Black National Business League is founded. So Booker T. Washington founds the National Negro Business League. Again, what? <laughs> Never even heard of that. Uh, later renamed the National Business League to support black entrepreneurs as they start out. Uh, I wonder if that's still like going on. Cause that'd be amazing. Uh, in the 1920s, uh, Black Wall Street rose up. In the Greenwood District of Tulsa, Oklahoma, affluent black businesses mushroom and flourish, earning the nickname Black Wall Street. 1980s, black business brings in billions. So this is crazy right here. Reginald Lewis is the first African-American to build a billion-dollar company, TLC International Holding. And then in 2004, Black Business Month is established. Founded by Frederick E. Jordan and John William Templeton, Black Business Month becomes an annual celebration. All right. So, yeah. So, you guys definitely check out that article. Uh, read through the actual whole history of it and everything. Um, and then see how, how much, you know, black history that we don't know, especially when it comes to business. Uh, I've been hearing a lot about, you know, in recent days, the Tulsa, Oklahoma thing. There's a lot of companies that are trying to right now build back up Tulsa. Uh, there's a couple of like foundations and stuff called actually like Build Tulsa uh, and stuff like that. But even with the other stuff, like I said, the Booker T. Washington uh, National Business League and stuff, I've, you know, I've never even heard of it. Uh, and I've been in business for, I think, over five years now. Um, so yes, yeah, a lot that we learn 
when you start digging, a lot that we learn, once you start doing the research, there's a lot of information out there um, that's really beneficial to the people. So uh, moving forward. So the next thing I want to talk about is another way that you can make money if you don't feel like solving a math problem. A website called SideHustleStack.co. And Side Hustle Stack is just basically a free resource in which you can find platform-based work. Uh, and this work is ranging from gig work to side hustles um, to different platforms and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of play to earn or play and earn, you know, platforms out there as well um, that you can use to help to start a small business and help it grow. Um, they have a bunch of the work categories here. So there's like chefs, there's coaches, there's e-commerce, there's podcasters, live streamers, gamers, fitness instructors, writers, teachers, restaurant workers, salesperson, all of that stuff. Um, and they have a couple of different companies. Axie Infinity, if you've been into NFTs and metaverse blockchain, you've probably heard of this one already. Um, but most of these I have never even heard of. Mirror, Metagame, Thrift, Fan House, Patreon, I've heard. Patreon's really big. Curated, Maven, Pear Pop, Beacons, uh, Dumpling, Instacart. I've heard of Instacart. Six Crickets, Gambly, Circle Time, Club of, Club of Helpers, EpiHub. I think I've heard of EpiHub, but I don't know what it is. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot. I mean, you can kind of see the scroll bar here, how tiny it is, and we're, we've got a lot to go. Um, oh, I've heard of Kajabi. Uh, so, yeah, so... I'm actually just going to click on one and see what it's about. I've never actually used Side Hustle Stack before. Club of Helpers? Uh, yeah, let's, well, let's see. So this is Personal Shopper. Okay, so if you want to be, I think, so if I click on this, right, shop and deliver groceries to customers, doors. Okay, yeah, so that, that makes sense. Um... Okay, so basically, if you're looking for a side hustle and you don't know where to start, this is just basically like a marketplace of side hustles. That's that's the best way I can describe it. So any side hustle that you want to do, um, let's just say let's just say you're a pet caretaker, right? And these are a bunch of different side hustles. I guess you can take care. Well, I don't want to do pet caretaker. Let's do let's see. Let's do something techy. Let's do uh Let's just click on tech. Uh let's click on cloud devs cuz it looks like a band-aid. Uh get paid to work as a developer or a designer. Uh it has to be from Europe or Latin America. Only 100 people making money on this platform. So it looks like I mean it looks like one of those things you have to like really feel out. Um, so you would come here, you would do some work and see if it works good for you or not. Um, uh, I would look at the people, number of people making money off of it. 120 people since 2020 get paid for your engineering skills and convert designs to code. Um, uh, Oh, that's at like $40 an hour. That's not bad. Meta game. This was, this was in the featured section. So let's see why this was featured. Uh, only 20 to 30 people making money off of this. Sell your knowledge or get paid to work on any project with digital skills ranging from drawing and design to programming and project management. Okay. Um, I want to click on Axie Infinity because I know a lot of people are making a lot of money on Axie Infinity. Uh, people making money on the platform, 350,000 monthly active users. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, to play Axie Infinity, a player must first purchase a team of at three axes. A starter team costs around 500 bucks. Um, yeah, so this is one of those play to earn situations there as far as like a gamer and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to click on mirror also. Let's see. Yeah, about 200 people making money off of this. 
Mirror is a crypto native publishing platform. Here are some ways you can earn money. You can enable reader tips, sell your content at NFTs, raise crowdfunding for a project, and much, much more. Um, so yeah, you can go off the right token stuff. Eh. All right, yeah. So if you're looking for like a little side gig, I would definitely say check out Side Hustle Stack. Do a little bit of browsing, you know, fill it out a little bit here and there. Uh, and just find something that really, you know, toots your horn, I guess. And then, uh, you know, make some money. All right. So the last thing that I have here for you guys today is Internet Time. So Internet Time has actually been around for quite some time. A company called Swatch has been using it. They actually made Swatch watches that went off of what they call dot beat time. So it's just a period. And then the word beat, B-E-A-T, not to be mistaken for the beat headphones. Um, and these basically watches kind of like um, were really big before the internet really took off and then it kind of fell off a little bit. I ran into them probably about a year ago and I've actually been using it um, for you know that amount of time. Uh, I haven't been using it, using it like actively all the time only because uh, nobody else is actually using it. I don't have a swatch watch and stuff like that. But essentially the basis behind it and i just come this is the only like thing i could find on it was a wikipedia article from who knows when um and again this is a dot beat time uh swatch is still around as a company they still make watches and actually their watches are like really 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 nice um but it's based off of the ust uh where is it at um it's based off a of UST and B uh, B O mean time, um, which is kind of where Swatch headquarters is, and it is in B O. Um, oh, not UST, UTC. Is it UTC or UST? Let me double check that. Okay, yeah, UTC. Um, so this Wikipedia article actually, you know, it kind of gives you the breakdown of how it works and how to measure it and stuff like that uh, but essentially as we all know there are something called time zones and the time zones basically tell us that hey where you currently are now somebody else however many miles down the road um, maybe plus one uh, uh, hours away from you or plus two hours away from you so I'm me I'm in the Midwest um, if you go further, what? Yeah, for if you go further west, um, it's like plus one in like a Chicago area, Chicago, Illinois. I think it is. Uh, it's plus two. Some I think Utah or something like that, and then California is like plus three. No, minus. Yeah, further west is minus, so it'd be minus. So if it's five o'clock here, then it's four o'clock in Chicago. You know, three o'clock in Utah two o'clock in uh, California, whatever. Uh, that's why if you follow the stock market, people in California usually wake up like at five, six o'clock in the morning to catch the market open in New York, which is at nine o'clock New York time. So they got to wake up at like five just to catch it at six or something like that, their time. Um, the way that internet time works though is that everything is on the same exact time frame, in which... Um, uh, it's in which it's not it's not divided up by time zone, just divided up by beats. And those beats are, you know, in my opinion, wonderful, especially because now we live in a digital world so that you, if you say, hey, I'm at, you know, 543 beats, no matter where you are in the entire world, 543 beats is always 543 beats. Um, there's no time zone to have to worry about or nothing like that. So imag just imagine having a Zoom call with somebody and say, hey, yeah, I'm going to Zoom call you at 5 o'clock. Is it 5 o'clock my time? Is it 5 o'clock your time? Is it 5 o'clock um, daytime? Is it 5 o'clock nighttime? It's so many um, unknowns in that case that you would have to describe it a little bit more and more and more just so everybody's on the same page. And then sometimes people are not on the same page. It just gets a lot hectic. But if you just say, hey, I'm going to call you at 248, all you got to do is say, okay, because no matter where you are, 248 is always 248. 
So in one day, you have 1,000 dot beats. One hour is equal to 141.6 beats. One minute is equal to 0.694 beats. And then one second is equal to 0.011574 beats. Um, and then also, I forgot to actually bring this up. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay, yeah, here it is. Swatch clock. So this is what I use to kind of help me understand the time. Um, right now it is 11.31 p.m. So I got to hurry up and get this uh, get this done for today. Um, so 11.31 p.m. kind of converts over to 188.7 beats. Uh, and again, this is 177 beats in California. I mean, 188 beats in California, so 188 beats in Africa, so 188 beats in um, China. No matter where you are, it's always going to be the same. Um, so if I need to have a Zoom call with somebody, I would just tell them, hey, I'm, I'm at this time, uh, and then we're good to go. So I think I think this is actually wrong, though, because this might be in the different time zone. Um Yeah, why is it saying 432 AM? Let's do eleven PM New York time. Oh no, it's still one hundred eighty nine. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause uh everything's based off of UTC, so it's not it's technically so UTC so yeah. So it's a little bit difficult to understand sometimes. So technically, I just want to check and see UTC at like 12 midnight. Yeah, 65 beats. So 12 p.m. would be 565 beats. Right, because it's halfway through the day and there's a thousand in one day. So then therefore, I'm going to just do like 1033. It'll be not yet 981. So then 1133, does that convert to? No, so that goes back. It says 11 o'clock exactly. Okay, so at 11 o'clock exactly, it's zero time. So I wonder what happens to the extra hour. I actually never never checked that. Mm, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, so definitely go over here to swatchclock.com. You know, see what time it is. Uh, I would recommend everyone start using it. Not only just because I'm using it, and I need I need some friends. Uh, but again, everything's going digital. Uh, we're doing stuff so much inside the metaverse now, and we need to know what time it is. Uh, where time is going to be at all times, pretty much. I mean, we still work based off of time, even though we are remote in pretty much almost all occasions. Uh, so you don't need to know the exact, you know, mathematical formation of how this is calculated. Um, but I would definitely say um, uh, just kind of, you know, make life easier for yourself by switching over to using that swatch clock time or beat time, whatever you want to call it. Uh, internet time as well, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so that is all I have for you guys here today. I'm not sure if you plan on doing a whole bunch of math work, but again, if you wish to make a million dollars, that may be one quick and easy, uh, simple way to go ahead and do that. Uh, also, check out that um, marketplace for side gigs, side hustles, and stuff like that as well. And uh, let me know what you guys think about the black business month the whole month of august uh if you guys find any interesting articles send them my way for sure because i would really love to uh, kind of learn more about how you know black people have been growing in business over the past few years um yeah so without any 
further ado, I believe that is all I have here today. Again, all of the description for all of these articles is going to be in the um, description of this video. I've said, put all the links in and everything. And then check me out on all of my social media channels. Um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everything. I, uh, I pretty much have it all. So um, nothing else. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. See it.